In the previous tutorial, we managed to make a put request in order to update a record, update a user's contact information, right? We send the updated value by making a put request and we managed to update the data on the server. We don't really have some kind of a, a success message to kind of let us know that something has changed. Now, if I were to make a change here and uh, just add a one here and I click save, well, the change has happened, but what I'd like to do is have some kind of a message here, which actually shows that the data was successfully saved. And uh, this message should ideally show up only when the put request was successfully completed. Now I could have the JSON server, which is running the backend. I could have that beat down and this page wouldn't let us know that the call failed, right? We would like to have some kind of a confirmation. So we're gonna be doing both a success message and a failure message. We're gonna handle both the success and the error scenarios. So how do we handle the success scenario? We have this service here, which makes the call and then we have a then method, which prints the response. So we are printing something to the console. What we'd like to do is have a banner at the top here, which says record successfully updated. I'm just gonna create a banner HTML element, which is not really a big deal, but I'm gonna put that there so that there is a place for our success message, message to show up. So here's the, the column for the contact information. I'm gonna have a div here, and I'm gonna use the uh, bootstrap alert class, alert, and then alert success. And then I'm gonna hard code the message now. I can say user, successfully updated, or let's say data successfully updated. I'm gonna close the div. Now we are gonna see uh, a success message all the time. So this needs to be changed to show up only when there has been a successful save to the database. All right, now what we're gonna do is have a message in the scope object, which is a success message for instance. And I'm gonna have that be something that shows up over here. I'm going to say CTRL dot success message, All right? And uh, I'm going to have this be an ng if so that this shows up only if there is something like success message on the scope. And I'm going to wait for a successful save to actually put that message into here. So I'm going to say this ng if is CTRL dot this message. Now the message is going to go away but now what we're going to do is we're going to populate the success message property when we have successfully updated the record. So when that happens the message is going to pop up over here. How do we make this happen? How do we populate the success message property on the controller scope when this is successful? Notice what we're doing in the controller here. We're just calling this service method. We're not really bothered about what the return is. This could fail and we don't care. We just make a call and then we forget about it. Notice what we're doing in the service. We have a then here to do something after the call happens, but that something just happens to be a console.log. We're not really doing anything here. Now, what we could do is when the call happens, this instance is an async method. This returns a promise, right? We could return the promise to the controller and have the controller do a then, and inside that then, take that message and populate it, right? Just like we're doing over here. We're doing a contact data service dot get contacts. Once we get that, we do a then and then do what we need, right? So for this to happen, the service needs to return the promise object. Now in this case, the save user method needs to return the promise object. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna say return. Now this, is gonna do HTTP dot put, that's gonna return a promise object, and on that, we're gonna do a then and print something to the console, which is fine. This dot then again is async, so it's gonna return another promise object, right? That's what this method is gonna return. It's gonna return the promise that was returned by this dot then. Now I'm gonna take that promise object over here, and I'm gonna call it dot then on top of it. I'm gonna say function, don't really care about what the data is. I don't want to hold on to it. What this does is return the response. If I'm returning a response over here, of course, I'm not returning anything. So you're not going to get anything back anyway. So this is not going to have any arguments. But what I am going to do is I'm going to say this dot success message equals whatever message I need. 
data successfully updated. Now what's going to happen? Once the save is complete and successful, the then is going to get called and the success message property on the scope is going to get populated. And when that happens, well, we have wired something up over here and that is this alert. There is an alert which shows up only when there is success message and it shows that success message inside this alert class so that you have that green bar thing that displays the alert. All right, let's refresh the page. Click on a user, click edit, make a change, click save. Well, nothing happened. Let's see why. I'm gonna open the console. We are getting the object back, but we are not returning the message. Let's see what I'm missing. Well, there is something that I'm missing. I'm gonna give you a minute to see if you can identify it. So if you wanna give that a shot, pause the video and see if you can find what's going on. All right, what I'm missing is, I'm calling this using the this reference. You remember I told you that when you're using a this reference inside a callback, you need to use the alias. Here, the alias is self. Uh, I don't wanna use this because in this function, the this reference is different. This is kind of JavaScript's behavior for the this reference. So I need to call a this reference with the alias when I'm doing this inside a callback function because every callback function is gonna have a different this reference. All right, let's refresh this one more time. Close the console, take a user again, edit, and remove the one this time, click save, and we get a message, data successfully updated. Cool, so that was the success message scenario. But before we wrap up this video, there's one thing that I wanna do. As you notice, there's a message over here. Now, if I click on a different user, so that message doesn't go away, it's always there. Now, I want the message to show up, yes, but when I click on a different user, I want that to go away. The reason it still stays is because it's in the controller property. Now you see here, I've put the success message property in there. And when I select a different contact, I want the property to get cleared. Now I can do one thing. I can go to the select contact method and that's where I can clear this message. So I'm going to do undefined, which is basically the beginning state of this property. It starts out being undefined. So when the select contact method is called, that is when the element in the grid, one of these guys are clicked on, then what I want to do is clear the success message. Let's refresh the page and make sure this works. I click on a user, edit it, change a value, click save. Now we have the message there, but when I click on a different user, that message goes away. All right, so this is perfect. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna handle the error case. Now, what happens when there is a problem in the server? Either let's say the server is down or there is an error. We wanna show an error message. So how do we handle those scenarios? Let's take a look at that in the next tutorial.